Okay, how's it going, Vaping MacGyver here? We're going to have a look at the drone. Oh, what is it? Drone 250. It's a squonker. So it's a DNA 250C squonker. Um, sent to me by Aussie Geek Vapor. And thank you very much for that, mate. Um, the main reason I'm taking this apart is to have a look at the 250 board, 250C board run it through all the normal tests which i've kind of been avoiding up until now um so many people using this board and the board is so famous that um i feel like i have to do a really good job and i have to test every point of it and get it perfect to want to test it uh, and actually post the results so a little bit stressful to be honest but um i will just run it through the normal stuff just treat it like it's a normal board um don't worry that Millions of people use it, probably not millions, maybe millions, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so thought I'd do the video of taking this device apart. Um, like I'm taking it apart anyway to get the board out. The main thing is I'm, I, I really just want the board. I don't care too much about this device, um, as in I'm not really doing a teardown and analysis on this device itself. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at it anyway as we go. All right, so what we'll do is get this guy apart and uh, extract the board. And um, got my little little tray to put the spare screws because I don't want to lose him because I do have to get this back together and um, give it back to Aussie. So <laughs> it's his device. I don't want to break it in the process. And um, you might notice he hasn't bothered wiping it down before sending it you bastard <laughs> so that's um smells smells fruity the juice i don't know what his favorite juice is but definitely smells a bit fruity i'm gonna have to get a tissue this is a bit rough <laughs> no, it's all good okay we'll probably yeah it's normal fast forward this bit um i have no idea how to get this apart i'm just gonna start taking screws out and see how we go uh, we'll get this bottle out, which might still have juice in it. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> um, so I found a couple of screws there, there. There's three on the top there, one on the bottom. So I'm hoping once I get those out and that one out, this sled should pull out. But we'll see how we go. They, they sometimes hide screws behind, uh, yep, behind the little warning sticker you can normally kind of run your fingernail along it just to feel if there's a there's a hole in there i thought there might be one there but no maybe i'm wrong maybe it's just an air bubble okay yep oh wrong size all right so once those top three screws are out which are Torques. I'm using a T6. I think it's actually a T7. But anyway, top three screws and that top plate comes off. So we're left with the. Make sure I'm on screen. Yep, good. Um, left with the 510 assembly. You can see the squonk tube. It's kind of interesting that plate just comes straight off. So it's a little bit juicy under there. Not too bad. I was kind of looking for, um, it's interesting taking apart devices that have been used for a little while. Um, just so you can see if juice has been making its way inside. You can look at the outside and obviously this has had a little bit of juice around. And then you can tell how much it's kind of getting inside. It's not too much, there's, there's some around the edge there. It hasn't kind of gone through that, that little cover. It doesn't have a seal on it, but um... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too much juice getting through there, which is good. Okay, another little screw there. It's a bit of a tricky one, this one. Another little black hidden screw just there. It looks like it goes through to the battery sled. So we'll just get him out. It's still no movement on the sled. So generally when you take apart a device and you've got no idea how to take it apart, you just remove all the fasteners you can see, all the screws, and um, just kind of see what feels loose and see if there's something else that is kind of holding it up. 
like if it's really loose at the bottom, you know you probably got everything down the bottom. And if it's like tight at the top, you know you got to keep looking. I know that sounds pretty straightforward, but um, yeah, just kind of take it slow and work on what you can see. Um, yeah, if you don't have a guide. So I, I'm kind of not getting a whole lot of movement. It's, it's sort of wiggling, but yeah, the tray is not just really wobbly. So something's still holding it in. I can't see any other screws around on the tray. So yeah, start taking these guys out. So those two screws removed and we've got our 510 free. And there we can see our squonking 510. So the juice connection there, it's a little bit of, a little bit of gunk around there. That? Yeah, it's actually, it's kind of a slight, kind of a bit of a hole there. Yeah, look at that. That's weird. How is that fitting? So maybe just the angle that that's installed at, it's kind of started to go through that tube. Yeah. Mm, see how close can we focus? Yeah, so we can actually see somehow, not entirely sure how, that tube has literally got a hole through it at the connection there. It's like when it got put in, it got sort of like the tube got mashed against the um, the connection and something else hard, and it's kind of um, yeah, it's kind of kind of pushed a hole through it. So yeah, there's a clear hole through there. That's not good because yeah. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of liquid that's going through there, I guess, because there's not a huge amount of resistance pushing the the liquid through compared to the size of the hole, but yeah, it's kind of crappy because, like, yeah, that would eventually just push juice all down through the mod. Okay. Don't worry about that for the moment. We'll keep going. Possibly the sled has some more screws through this way under this panel, but this panel, I'm not sure how it comes off. Uh, okay. Right, as I said that, you literally just pop it off. Uh, okay. That answers that. So we'll, more of the buttons are separate, so we'll just keep those. I've got a nice silicon, little silicon membrane there on both the fire buttons. Yeah, so not molded in, just just sitting on top there. Um, but that's a nice little touch to stop liquid getting in through there. They'll act as a seal once the front front plate is on there. Um, so we don't really need to pop these off, but we will anyway. Pop those in a little jar. And yeah, there's three screws holding the sled in there, there, and there. Just Phillips head, small Phillips head, um, zero or double zero maybe. Yep, going through from that way and just retaining the sled. Yeah, so the board's buried pretty far in this mod. Um, which you kind of get with the more complicated designs. When you got a squonk bottle or two cell regulated board squonk mod, uh, there's a fair bit going on, so... Yeah, that kind of happens. Things get a bit, a little bit complicated with the construction. Um, so yeah, a lot of, lot of fasteners really. It's like oh, I can't quite see, but yeah, you am up to probably fifteen screws. So no, maybe not 10, 15 screws. Oh, that one's different. Mental note: top one is a different thread. Is like a machine thread. And the, these two down below were a um, like a self-tapper thread because they will be going directly in the plastic and that it will be going into something else in the metal. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Like layers of an onion. <laughs> right, interesting. So they've got another piece there. And the screen is just sitting on top of that piece. And the board's mounted underneath against the metal. Okay, so we need to just pop this screen out of the way. Hopefully that just lifts up. 
Careful. <laughs> so, Jesus, we're going to turn this back on and see if the screen works. I might have just stuffed that. To lift, to get, well, to get this front plate off, this inner, inner front plate. <laughs> layers upon layers. Front plate, inner front plate. This pops off. To get this off, you have to get the screen out of the way, but the screen's stuck down. And just as I was wedging it out, I was kind of like the layers of the screen coming apart, which scares me like I might have just kind of separated layers of the screen that should never, ever be separated. So I may have just stuffed that. But yeah, if you want to take it apart, that's what you're going to have to do. I mean, they're not made to be taken apart, which kind of sucks. I could have probably... No, I couldn't. Um, these screens are replaceable, which is one good thing about DNA boards. Most boards, are, you can't change the screen. Well, you, you can if you can do, you know, pretty hardcore soldering, if you can do surface mount soldering. Uh, but most boards have the screen directly soldered to the board. Um, the DNAs will have these little connectors that you can flip up and then um, the screen actually unplugs off the board. So if you do have a dead screen or this little ribbon cable gets damaged for whatever reason, you can replace the screen, which is a pretty good feature. So yeah, if I've stuffed it, then we'll just have to get another screen. And that's not too big a deal. I think 250C screens should be relatively avail available, which is great because, like, yeah, the screens for other boards, I hate kind of saying Chinese boards, but yeah, they all pretty much come from China. Um, they're not available, not easily available as a spare part. They're a real pain in the pain in the ass to track down if you can find them at all. Um, and then yeah, they're they're a pain to actually swap over because you got to solder them on, and they're tiny little pins, and you got to have the right equipment, either a hot air gun. I think you could probably do it with. Well, you could do it with a very fine tip soldering iron, um, but don't like your chances honestly because you can lift tracks off the board really easy there's wires from the cells which um, go back to the board you've got a monitoring wire sorry not there further down oh that's funny okay okay so that's interesting the way it's set up the way it's set up is you've got wires running the whole way so the bottom is a series connection that doesn't make a whole lot of sense why would you do it that way oh they're doing it in parallel why okay that's kind of weird why would you do it that way let's see if we can get this sled out a little bit further give us more of a clue what's going on so they've got the battery orientations the same way. So you've got both positives at one end, both negatives at one end. But it is it'll be running in series because the the DNA two fifty C runs on minimum two cell in series um, to get nominal uh, seven point four volts. Can run I think on three and four cells in series um, to give you the higher wattage, higher voltages into the board. But what did what they've done is set them so in series what you'd normally do is you'd have positive negative and then positive negative so you'd you just join these bottom guys and then you take your main positive main negative off the other end or you know whichever way suits where it's going to your board and obviously on the bottom here is where the cell connections are which means it would be best to have a series series connection up here because the series connection doesn't really have to go in doesn't go anywhere else just goes between the cells joins the, the ends of the two cells and you only have to one run one little thin wire for monitoring back to the board not a big deal because it doesn't carry any current then you could run short wires from the main positive main negative back to the board here without having to use a whole lot of wiring but I can see there's wiring just goes the whole length of the board there and it's just weird that you'd run it battery orientations the same way because then you'll have to have how does this even work well that'll have to connect back to that negative and then positive back to the board and then negative so 
We've got a whole lot of looping going on with the wire. Now, I always think to have the wires as short as possible because wires are extra resistance, which means extra voltage drop. Um, it's extra messing around when you're assembling the device. So you've got to run more stuff through the case and make sure it's in the right spot and make sure the insulation isn't getting pinched. Um, it's just more, more time and effort in assembly, more stuff that can go wrong. And yeah, more resistance means voltage drop and um, yeah, you kind of need all the voltage you can get, especially if you're low cutoff. You know, if you you don't want to be losing something like 0.1 of a volt, that's roughly equivalent to like 10% of your battery life. So when you and your cells won't actually be empty, it's just the board will think they're empty because you're losing 0.1 across the wiring. You know, if if it was losing that much, so then the board would think, yeah, it did cut off earlier, which kind of sucks. And you don't want that. Because yeah, we're always trying to get the most amount of battery life. Mm, weird. Weird, weird, weird. Alright, so what I'll do is desolder these wires off the board. And then I will be able to get the board actually completely out of the mod. Then I can rig it up to the USB test rig. Um, and then later on we'll do we'll, we'll get a couple of current shunts and wire it up for wattage testing. So we'll test the, the wattage output and the power wattage input from the cells. Um, we can determine efficiency. We'll see how close it is to the, the wattage set. Uh, what else? We will do low cell cutoff, like the bat battery management stuff. Uh, low cell cutoff. We might try it at kind of one or two different settings. We'll try it at the default settings and um, just see how well it matches up to those settings. I'm not gonna run through like the whole range because I'd be doing like a hundred tests. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll just see how close it is to those. Well, to the setting, you know, we'll say if we set the cell cut off at two point nine and it goes to two point nine five, then we, you know, that's an, that's an answer. Yeah, that about does it for that video. So that's what's inside your Lost Vape drone. Fairly complicated device, really. So you've got a whole lot going on with the Squonk 510, the tube, the wires coming from the board. Anyway, okay, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> See you for the next one. Cheers.